Hello, everyone. Welcome to the introduction to Invoice and Subscriptions API. Awesome to have you here today. My name is Bobby Lee. I'm a developer advocate here at Square. And with me today is Shazia, who is a product marketing manager on our developer platform. And then we have Hung, the product manager for invoices, and Chris, the engineering manager for subscriptions. They will both be answering your questions throughout the session. Shazia will first go over the invoices API and what it is and its top use case. And then I'll run through a short tutorial on how to use it. After that, we'll go into the subscriptions API. So same thing here. Shazia will chat about what the API is and its top use cases. And then I'll do another tutorial on how to use it. Just a heads up, if you have any questions, please ask them throughout the session in the Q&A section on the right provided. And after we're done explaining both of the APIs, there, um, if there's time, we'll read out loud some of the most upvoted questions and answers. So I'll hand it over to Shazia to kick us off. Hi everyone, I'm Shazia and I'm responsible for driving the go-to-market growth and adoption of a few of our APIs, including the invoices and subscriptions APIs. Since the early days of Square, our vision has been to combine the collective force of our seller-first ecosystem with the power of extensibility from our ever-growing ecosystem of developers. That means a lot of APIs enabling powerful integrations and use cases. Let's start with an overview of the Invoices API. Generally, an invoice allows businesses to request and collect payment from customer based on a statement or bill of what's due. The Invoices API helps to streamline the process of collecting payments. Rather than manually creating an invoice for every order, sellers can save time by relying on the API to automate payment collection. Sellers are able to create, list, search, publish, update, cancel, and delete invoices, all within the Square Point of Sale, Square Dashboard, Square Invoices app, and any third-party platform. The API also offers centralized data management by synchronizing invoicing data across platforms, making the data easily accessible to sellers in the Square Dashboard. Invoices API has helped to unlock interesting use cases, one of them being an integration with Copper, a customer relationship management software. When the CRM user, a seller in this case, closes their one opportunities, Copper calls on the invoices API to auto-create and send square invoices to the customer for payment. Once the payment is made, payment history is synced in both Copper and Square, enabling succinct invoice management and discoverability. We've, been, we've seen similar use cases unlocked with other CRMs and even productivity tools. I'll pass it back over to Bobby Lee to provide a demo on using the Invoices API. Okay, awesome, let's get started. So I'm about to show you a sample app with invoices. Then I'll head into our API Explorer to show you how to create a customer, then create an order associated to that customer, and lastly, draft an invoice to be paid by that customer for that order. So let's head over to the sample app with demo customers. Here's my merchant, Telson Contractors, and their Sandbox customers. I'm going to click on one that has a card on file. So here are the services that Telson Contractors has done for this customer. So let's click on create invoice with card on file for a roofing inspection for $75. Now here is the drafted invoice. So let's click publish to schedule it. And then to show you the full list of open invoices for this customer, I'll click back on the left and you'll see all of this customer's invoices listed here at the bottom. So now I'm going to dig into some of these requests and what's all going on here in our API Explorer. So this is our API Explorer. Here's where you can test requests in your language of choice. At the top pink arrow is where you set the API and the endpoint you're working on. So I'll set my API to customers and create customer. Then I'll set the access token and add a random valid email, family name, and given name. And lastly, I'll generate an item potency key to make sure we only create the object once if we retry this request with the same key. Then I'll just run the request. I'll save the customer ID here returned because we'll need it in a minute. Now I'm going to create the order we'll invoice this customer for. So I'm going to make an order for a $30 dog walking service. So I'm going to set my API to orders now and create order. Then I'll generate a new item potency key and paste the merchant's location ID, which you can get on your developer dashboard. 
and add the customer ID from earlier. Now let's add a line item, which needs a quantity of one and base price money of 3,000, which is $30 and cents. And we'll use USD since that's where our store is based. And lastly, a name for this line item. How about Thursday Dog Walk? Now let's run the request. And I'll save the order ID here from the response. So now that we have an order, let's make an invoice for it. So I'll set my API now to invoices and create invoice. Then I'll fill in location ID again and order ID. Then click payment requests and just fill in um, a due date for any day in the future. Now you'll wanna choose a request method and there are three options. Email means that Square will automatically send an invoice to, uh, sorry, automatically send an email to the customer with a link to the invoice, either upon publishing or at a scheduled time. If we were to publish the invoice in production, Square would send an email to both the seller and the customer with an invoice. Next option. If you choose charge card on file, you can automatically charge a customer's card and a paid invoice will be sent to the customer upon publishing the invoice. And lastly, you can select the share manually option. Use this option if you wanna share the public URL with the customer your own way. So in a custom email template or via SMS. Let's go share manually today because we're just testing things out. And then for the request type, we're gonna choose balance because we're paying the invoice in full today. And last one field to fill in is your customer ID. And that's it, so now let's run it. Now we've created the invoice. Let's review it on the seller sandbox dashboard. So on the developer dashboard, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down below your apps and you'll see a section called sandbox test account and then click open next to default test account. Once it's open, just click invoices on the left. And look, here highlighted in blue is our drafted invoice for $30. So that's it. Let's recap. I first demonstrated the invoices sample app and then in the API Explorer, I created an order for a $30 dog walking service and then drafted an invoice to soon be published and emailed to this customer. If you wanna keep going and learning the next steps, like how to publish this drafted invoice and pretend to be a customer and pay for it, watch our YouTube video that we will link in chat. So next up now is subscriptions API and I'm gonna pass this back to Shazia to kick it off. The subscriptions API, subscriptions are a popular way for businesses to handle no contact commerce. And lately it seems that there's a subscription for everything from beauty to meal kits and clothes. In fact, even with the recent impact to our global economy, subscription-based companies continue to grow, some even with accelerated growth rates. The Subscriptions API helps sellers generate a reliable cash flow and recurring revenue in growing their businesses and enables developers to automatically create, retrieve, and update subscription plans from any third-party platform. Developers can access advanced features such as multiple billing cadences and even the capability to set billing phases that allow for free trials. The Subscriptions API also offers centralized data management, automatically syncing subscription data from Square Online Checkout and other third-party platforms to the Square dashboard, making it easier for sellers to track and report on their subscriptions and expected revenue. The Subscriptions API also unlocks several cool use cases for us. Gravity Forms, a form builder, uses the API to extend subscriptions as an option through their lead forms. Superpay, a provider of recurring payment services, built a, built a buyer facing experience to manage subscriptions. And we've also got Birdie, a golf software provider, and Terramala, a yoga studio software that rely on the API to be able to provide options to subscribe to their services. I'll pass the mic back to Bobby Lee and she'll give you a walkthrough on using the subscriptions API. Okay, so let's get started with another tutorial. So first I'm gonna show you how to create a subscription plan, then create a customer to subscribe to it. And lastly, I'll show you how that customer with a card on file will automatically be charged for their subscription. So let's start by creating a subscription plan in the merchant catalog by using catalog API. 
an endpoint upsert catalog object. Then we'll generate an item potency key again. Then the object ID needs to start with a hashtag. So let's use hashtag ice cream. And for type, we'll choose subscription plan. Now scroll down and find subscription plan data and add it. And a name, let's do ice cream club. And then let's add two phases here. So the first phase will be a month long trial for $1. So we'll select a monthly cadence and let's put 100 cents, so $1 in cents for this month long trial period. And since it's only one month, let's set the periods to one. Now the second subscription phase is for after the trial phase elapses. This will charge customers $20 per month after the trial phase. So set the cadence to monthly, but omit the periods limit and set the recurring amount to $20, so 2,000 cents. Okay, cool. Now I ran the request and opened it up here. It's a 200 response, so that's awesome. We've successfully created a subscription plan for the ice cream club. See in the response, there's a cataloged object ID for the plan, so let's grab that and save it for later. Now let's create a customer who wants to subscribe to it. Let's set the API to customers and create customer. In order to create a customer and send an email invoice, our customer will need a family name, given name, and email address. So fill that in and let's run the request and grab the customer ID from the response here. So now we've, we're ready to subscribe our customer to the plan. Let's select subscriptions API and create subscription endpoint here. And then paste the customer's ID from the customer we just created, generate a new item potency key and fetch your merchant's location ID again and add that here and paste the catalog object ID we got back earlier into our plan ID field. And lastly, we'll use a sandbox value for the card ID. Now I ran the request, so let's copy the subscription ID returned. Now let's check the, out the sandbox seller dashboard again to see the invoice generated for this subscription. So navigate back to the developer dashboard and click open again. Now, once you're in dashboard, look on the left for the invoices tab. And look, the card on file has automatically been charged and the invoice is marked as paid. If we didn't have a card on file here, an invoice would be sent by email instead of charging the card. So that's it for subscriptions and invoices API. We've linked their docs and API and the API Explorer into chat. We're gonna stick around to answer any questions you may have. And then at 12, we'll start the terminal API introduction and tutorial. And yeah, if we don't have any questions, we have some questions and answers for you to just some main questions that have come up. So Shazia can take that off if we, here's our first question. So um, how do you handle payment failures? How do we update seamlessly the credit card? Chris or Hong wanna take that? Sorry, is that a question for subscriptions API or invoice API? Description. Yeah, so the, the way we handle payment failures today is that if we fail to charge a card on file, we essentially send an invoice to the buyer. So let's say it's month one, we build the card on file and it succeeds. Um, and now it's month two and we try to build the card and it fails. We'll go ahead and send the buyer, email the buyer an invoice and have the buyer pay the invoice through the pay button um there are there are more advanced dunning flows that you can access by by integrating with some of our partners so you can reach out to us if you're interested in that um as far as what was the second part of the question sorry how, yeah how do we update the seamlessly credit card how do we update seamlessly the credit card got it um there's there's currently two ways um that we're making it available one is obviously through the api so you can call this update subscription endpoint to update the subscription. Um, that method is available today. Um, very soon, as in sometime before the end of the quarter, 
we're going to make available two other ways to up, update uh, the car on file for a subscription. One, as a seller, you can do it through dashboard, um, through our new administrative UIs that are coming out on the dashboard side to help you manage your subscriptions and manage your plans. Um, the other way is uh, we are now, we are looking to make available a way for buyers to self-serve update their own um, card on file through a uh, simple management page. Um, and if you're interested in that, please reach out to us. I think we might be out of time. If not, we can answer the next one. Does the pay button update the credit card? Same question. That's a very good question. The pay button does not update the credit card right now. We're aware of this gap and uh, we are we will be addressing it before the end of the quarter. Fingers crossed. 